In our next lesson, we will start by asking the question, what does a neural network learn or how does it represent information? Consider the following benchmark problem. So we have scanned images of handwritten digits from 0 to 9 and we want to classify those images into the corresponding classes from 0 to 9. So 10 different classes as an output. A well-known benchmark problem where this is done is the MNIST database of handwritten digits. Now suppose we have trained a two-layer perceptron, a two-layer dense neural network to recognize such images and uh, classify them into these 10 classes. Now, what does this neuron here, for example, learn? So for this, we can ask the question how it is connected to its previous neurons, the previous layer. And suppose it has a strong connection where there's a blue, con uh, blue line and a weak connection where there's a thin yellow line. And uh, uh, suppose it has strong connections to all the pixels in the first row. So in this case, this neuron is basically a feature detector for a horizontal line in the first row of the image. Now, in this way, we can imagine neurons to be feature detectors of certain patterns in the image, such as there is a block of bright pixels in the top left, or um, other features such as vertical lines, horizontal lines, small circles, etc. But in all these examples that I've given you now, those features would be, or would, would, be, would be detected at particular positions of the image. So they would not be invariant, for example, to the position or the translation of the feature across the image. And um, one way to get some generalization into these featureizations is to make the network deeper. So um, consider, for example, that we have learned in the first hidden layer feature detectors for detecting a horizontal line in row 1, row 2, row 3. And now we want to generalize this into um, a feature that says has there any horizontal line been detected, then we can combine the outputs of those position-specific feature detectors into a more general feature detector, which basically gets active when there is any horizontal line in the image. And in this way, we can group specific features into more general feature detectors. Now, problem of uh, deep neural networks, independent of the specific architecture, is that they can be hard to train. And I've alluded to this in the last lesson where I've introduced you to activation functions. So remember that smooth activation functions like TANH or logistic functions can uh, have the problem that if you concatenate many of them, there can be vanishing gradients. And that means the parameters of these networks can be very difficult to train with gradient descent because you have little gradient information left. And this has been an important problem of deep learning for many, many years. So in other words, it was difficult to train deep neural networks because of the vanishing gradient problem. These three gentlemen, Geoff Hinton, Joshua Benjo and Jan LeCun, have made very fundamental contributions for making deep neural networks trainable and therefore have been awarded the Turing Award uh, of computer science for deep learning. Another example of people that have made very important and early contributions to deep learning are Sepp Hochreiter and Jürgen Schmidhuber, who have developed the long short time memory a neuron that can be used in order to form recurrent neural networks and those networks can be made very deep in some sense due to the way these neurons are constructed. Now let us 
go to a different and very important type of neural network architecture. So far we have only talked about dense neural networks or fully connected feedforward neural networks. And now I want to speak about convolutional neural networks. So convolutional neural networks uh, is an architecture that has been developed especially for image processing, but they can be used for pretty much any type of signal information where there is some meaning of space or neighborhood between the individual dimensions, such as the pixels in an image. So the pixels in an image have a certain position in the image and each pixel has neighbors. And th this neighborhood information or topology information, if you like, uh, can be used in order to give the neural network a specific structure. And um, the core of a convolutional neural network is, as the name says, the convolutions. So a convolution can be thought of as the following operation. So consider you have a bitmap of pixels and here I just give pixel intensities in terms of integer variables from 0 to 3. So 3 is bright and 0 is dark. And we consider that we compute a convolution of this blue image with a gray filter. So what we do is that we basically take our filter and we move it across the image and for every position of filter over the image we take the scalar product over the overlapping pairs of elements. So in the upper left picture you basically do 3 times 0 plus 3 times 1 plus 2 times 2 etc etc and if you sum up these products you end up with the number 12 and you write that number into the top left pixel of the output image, the convolved image or the feature map. And you do this for every position of the filter over the image and you get correspondingly an output in the resulting output pixel. So this way the input image is convolved using the filter into an output image or feature map. So what does such a convolution do? Well that depends on the filter. So for example if you consider these simple filters for um, the image shown here you can uh, do things like edge detection uh, so those are convolutions that will highlight whenever there is a significant change of the brightness in a certain direction like horizontal or vertical or diagonal. Um, you can define convolutions that sharpen the image or that blur the image such as these Gaussian filters. And in this sense uh, convolutions with specifically designed filters have been used for a very long time in image processing and they are for example to be found in image processing tools like uh, Adobe Photoshop or Lightroom where you have essentially tools to modify your image by running certain convolution filters over them. The idea of convolutional neural networks is now not to hand define these filters but to learn them. In other words the parameters that you learn with these neural networks are now not just weight matrices that belong to the two fully connected uh, pairs of layers of neurons but now you learn the filters of a convolution operation that acts between the layers of the neural network. And very often when you do apply such convolutional neural networks to image data, for example classification of image data that consists of faces, such as you can see in this example, then you often find that the convolutional filters that have been learned by the neural networks represent quite meaningful information. So very often in the first convolution layers you find these edge detect detection filters simply because edge detection happens to be something very useful if you need to recognize patterns or images in image data. 
Um, in the second layer of filters, you might find some features that, for example, represent eyes or noses or eyebrows. And in a deeper layer, you might find faces or parts of faces. But these are kind of representative faces that are able to span the space of faces rather than particular faces that are found in individual images. These convolutional neural networks are state-of-the-art for uh, learning and uh, generalizing information from imaging data, but also from many, many other types of data where there is neighborhood information between pixels or individual dimensions of the data set. And uh, here you see examples from uh, the MNIST data set. So that is a data set where the task is to recognize which digit has been written and scanned in the corresponding image. It's, it consists of 60,000 scans of handwritten digits, 50,000 training data and 10,000 10, test data. And here you see how a very, very simple and old convolutional network that is not at all state of the art, um, uh, but still does a decent job, um, how that classifies input images into zeros, ones, twos, etc., etc. And this neural network it gets a 95% test accuracy, which is actually quite bad. You can easily get 99.8 or something like that percent with state-of-the-art architectures for this for this benchmark data set. So this benchmark really has been solved. But even for this relatively poor classification prediction, you still can see that the misclassified examples are actually not that easy at all. So in many of these misclassified examples, a human would even not be sure which of these digits it should be. So this is, I mean, going well above 95%, maybe well above 99% is probably already pushing the accuracy limit that makes sense for this data set. All right. So with this, we are finished for uh, the present lecture that has introduced um, an idea of what a neural network learns, how it represents information that individual neurons can be seen as feature detectors. Then we have briefly spoken about deep learning and uh, then about convolutional neural networks, an important architecture used in many, many deep learning methods.